Let's solve a math problem, which I think is from the Gaokao exam problem, which is a very competitive college entrance exam in China. So we will let s to be equal to the square root of x plus 2 plus square root of y plus 5 plus the square root of z plus 10 and t to be equal to the square root of x plus 1, square root of y plus 1 and z plus 1. And here we will take x, y, z to be bigger than 0. So the problem wants us to find the minimum value of the expression s squared minus t squared. So to solve this problem, we will recall a useful inequality in math, which is the koji Schwartz inequality. And I also have a video about it. So if you want to check it out, be sure to click on the card over here. So now, the cauchy schwartz inequality states that if you take a1 square plus a2 square up until an square times by b1 square, b2 square up until bn square, it is bigger than or equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 up until a n b n. So we can actually treat it as some form of cross product between a i and b i, and then you take the whole thing square. Where here we we'll take a i and b i to be real sequence. So to solve this problem, we can actually use the cauchy schwarz inequality. But first, we see that we have s square minus t square. So generally, by observing this form, it is more natural thing that we can actually separate this into s minus t times by s plus t. And now, we shall write this as s minus t is square root of x plus 2, and we will now group with minus x plus 1 plus square root of y plus 5, minus square root of y plus 1, plus square root of z plus 10, minus square root of z plus 1. And we'll times it by the same thing, just that the minus sign is being switched to plus signs. And so now, by observing these two terms grouped together, we can see that they look quite similar to each other, just that the signs are different. And moreover, since they are radical expression, it leads us to think that they are actually related to the radical conjugate of each other. So in this case, what we can do is that we can take the second product, which let me write the first product again. And then now, I'll rewrite this as the square root of x plus 2 plus square root of x plus 1 and then I'll multiply it by the radical conjugate, which is square root of x plus 2 minus square root of x plus 1 over square root of x plus 2 minus square root of x plus 1. And then you can do it for the other terms. So we get this y plus 5 plus square root of y plus 1 times it with the conjugate. So we change the plus signs to negative signs over square root of y plus 5 minus square root of y plus 1. And then we have square root of z plus 10 plus square root of z plus 1 square root of z plus 10 minus square root of z plus 1 over square root of z plus 10 minus square root of z plus 1. And then now what we can notice is that in the first term over here, if you multiply out everything, you get that this whole thing is just equal to 1. And from here, this whole thing is equal to 4. And here, this whole thing will simplify into 9. Because you can actually just use the difference of two squares formula. So in the end, what we can get is that this whole thing, which I will just move everything to here, it is equal to, well, the first product is still the same, square root of x plus 2 minus square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x plus 5 minus square root of y plus 1 plus square root of z plus 10 minus square root of z plus 1. And then we will times it by 1 over square root of x plus 2 minus square root of x plus 1 plus 4 over square root of y plus 5 minus square root of y plus 1 plus 9 over square root of z plus 10 minus square root of z plus 1. And now 
we can actually apply the cauchy schwarz inequality. Where here, we notice that we can treat this as the square root of square root of x plus 2 minus square root of x plus 1, the whole thing squared. Well, essentially, it's because the square root of x plus 2 minus square root of x plus 1 is positive. And similarly, you can do it for the other expression. So this is square root of the square root of y plus 5 minus square root of y plus 1, the whole thing square. And this is the same. This is the square root of the expression square root of z plus 10 minus z plus 1, and the whole thing square. And for the other product, this thing is 1 over the square root of the expression x plus 2, which is in the square root, minus the square root of x plus 1, the whole thing square. And then the second term is 2 over the square root of the expression square root of y plus 5, minus square root of y plus 1, the whole thing square. And similarly for the last one, it is the square of 3 over square root of the expression square root of z plus 10 minus square root of z plus 1. And now, by applying the cauchy schwarz inequality, we see that this whole thing is bigger than or equal to. You take the cross term of each sequence. In the end, this is bigger than or equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, the whole thing squared. Because you see that the terms at the denominator will cancel off with the other term in the other product. And this whole thing is equal to 6 squared, which is 36. So this is our answer. And now we actually look at another way to solve this problem, which is by using some geometry. So for the second solution, I have made a picture over here, which is a geometric constru construction. So what we construct is that we have a right angle triangle ADG and then we'll let GF to be equal to the length square root of x plus 1, FE to be equal to the square root of y plus 1 and ED to be equal to the square root of z plus 1. And then we'll construct three segments which is CD equals to 1 and BC equals to 2, AB equals to 3. And now by connecting the length AI IH and HG, we see that we have that the length AI is equal to the square root of Z plus 10 because it is the square of square root of Z plus 1 plus 3 squared, which is 9. And if you add it together, you get square root of Z plus 10. Similarly, you can do it for the lengths HI and GH. So you get that this is square root of Y plus 5 and this is square root of x plus 2. So now, we can also see that from this diagram over here, we have that t is equal to the length of gd, and s is equal to the length of ai plus ih plus hg. And now we can also note that we have that the length s is greater than or equal to the length of ag. It's because the shortest length between two points, which in this context is A and G, is a straight line, which is the line AG. So therefore, S can be the minimum value, which is the length of AG. So therefore, in this case, we have that S squared minus T squared is greater than or equal to AG squared minus GD squared. Which, looking at this diagram over here, we know that AG squared minus GD squared is equal to AD squared since we have a 90 degrees which is the angle ADG. So therefore, AD squared is equal to 3 plus 2 plus 1 the whole thing squared which is 6 squared and this is 36. And so we have the same answer as we did in the first method. So therefore, we are done for this problem. And if you want to watch more math examination problems, then be sure to watch this video over here.